Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm gonna take a look at this one it's a Commodore 64G It is uh, a white bread bin. It has a little uh, uh, different colors on the Condor logo, and it has uh, white keys with uh, all the different uh, symbols on the keys uh, printed on top of the key, not on the front or the side as it was uh, on some other models. It came with a power supply, and as you can see, <laughs> The power supply is very yellowed, whereas the machine doesn't uh, seem to be much yellowed. I also got a Commodore cassette player here. I know this machine doesn't work because I have uh, tested it and uh, it says here a black screen. Fuse is okay, 12 and 5 volt uh, regulators output are okay. No dead test response. So. That's what we got. Let me just take a moment here and thank my sponsor PCBWay. They are sponsoring this video and uh, I got a lot of uh, PCBs uh, produced by them, which I found on uh, their shared project site. And uh, I must say the quality is really good, so I can really recommend PCBWay. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can uh, upload your Gerber files and uh, get an instant quote on producing your PCBs and the uh, prices are really affordable. Besides PCB manufacturing, they can also do CNC machining and 3D printing, including injection molding. They also do PCB assembly and advanced PCB. So go ahead and visit PCBWay.com and check out their services. This machine uh, has to be repaired. I'm uh, not sure what's wrong with it uh, other than it's a black screen. That could mean a lot of things. So I'll start with some um, diagnostics. And also this machine needs a good cleaning uh, later. <laughs> the previous owner of this machine uh, who sold it to me uh, claimed that he took it out recently and uh, tested it and played some games for about an hour and then it suddenly died so um, then he decided to sell it as is and I always like a challenge so uh, I'm pretty sure we can fix uh, this together in this video. One common issue with these old machines is uh, the power supply and uh, these power supplies are uh, really bad and after 30 years they are starting to fail and they fail in a really bad way. They start to give out too much uh, voltage and uh, the 5 volt voltage from uh, this power supply goes directly to the machine and the different uh, chips. So if this starts to uh, give out too much voltage, it can damage the machine. That could be the issue here, I don't know. Anyway, here I have a modern uh, replacement power supply that should be exactly 5 volts out. So let's uh, check this one. Yeah, it says 5.02 volts. Now let me compare with this old power supply. Let's see now what we got on the 5 volts. Okay, so it's uh, 5.16, it's almost 5.2 volts. And that is perhaps a little uh, borderline to too much, I don't know. I have heard that uh, voltage over 5.2 could be uh, damaging for uh, the Commodore 64, but uh, not really sure if that is uh, the case. Anyway, I'm not gonna use this power supply anymore. I'm gonna use this uh, new modern one. So let's start a little uh, diagnostics of this machine. I'm first just turning it on to see if it actually powers on. And uh, yeah, it uh, does produce a, a video signal. However, as you can see, nothing appears on the screen except the black. And if I insert the diagnostics cartridge, it 
it produces an image, but it's uh, all purple. <laughs> so uh, not a lot of excitement going on there. Just for fun, I'm going to check with the diagnostics cartridge as well. Nothing at all. So there's not much fun in this machine now. And uh, I'm going to open it and uh, yeah, take out the motherboard. Actually, it is missing uh, two of its uh, screws, so it only has this one. So I need to find uh, new screws. And also one of the keyboard uh, mechanism uh, lock here is uh, broken off. That is a common mistake, but uh, I have actually made uh, replacements for this with uh, my 3D printer before, so I'm gonna attempt that on this one as well. And this nice uh, cardboard uh, <laughs> shield. Talking about 3D printers, uh, this is actually something I printed on my 3D printer. It's a tray for keeping screws. I'm taking out the motherboard because I want to clean everything. So uh, yeah, just start with that. The motherboard uh, appears to be in good shape. Uh, there's a lot of dust, of course. Uh, that is uh, completely normal on these old machines. So what do we got here? Well, everything looks okay, except for uh, dirt. SID chip is in socket, CPU is in socket. Uh, one of the three ROM chips are in socket. PLA chip is in socket. Let's take a look inside uh, the video circuitry. The WIC2 chip, there it is. Oh. It's one of those uh, old ceramic chips. These are really nice. They have uh, <laughs> gold pins. All right, so I'm going to take and uh, clean off uh, this board and then I can start the measuring. So I'm gonna head down to my garage and use a little compressed air on this beauty. Ooh, it's a seven minus outside today. That's much better with most of the dust is gone. And uh, let me now just check some voltages around the the board we can start with a 5 volt regulator and it is a dead on 5.04 volts and the 12 volt regulator 11.8 so that's good the fuse is okay let's see if we get something across uh, the board to the cassette port for example yeah 4.8 volts so between those two points on uh, the user port there is uh, 10 volts ac at 50 hertz so that's uh, correct let's see if we have um, 5 volts to the memory chips yeah 4.8 when i diagnose a commodore 64 board i always take out uh, uh, any chips that's not necessary so I'm gonna take out um, the seed chip because the seed can actually bring uh, down the whole machine if it uh, has failed in some uh, spectacular way. So um, without it, we just move something out of the equation. The machine will work without the seed chip. So let's test. Nope, nothing. No, before I start to check uh, signals on the different chips using the oscilloscope, I will of course try and replace the chips that actually are socketed at first. And uh, yeah, one of the most common failures on uh, Commodore 64 is uh, the PLA chip. So I got this PLA chip replacement. It's the GAL PLA. It consists of two GAL chips and this is a direct replacement of um, the old MOS 906114 
chip. So let's check this. Let's see now, was it a PLA chip? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that was an easy fix, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> I can't say that I'm not a little bit disappointed. I, I actually wanted a little bit more uh, of a challenge. Uh, <laughs> But then again, uh, the PLA chip is um, always the first suspect on these machines with the black screen. Well, that was nice. I have a working C64G and I'm going to insert the 6581 uh, SID chip and uh, then run some uh, diagnostics just to see that everything is okay besides uh, that. Let's see now, turn up the volume, see if the SID chip is uh, working. There was sound, uh, however, uh, the TV just uh, stopped responding to my uh, remote controller, so I couldn't turn up the volume. Well, well, one bad PLA chip. Uh, luckily, I got several of these uh, GAL PLA and uh, also other PLA replacements uh, that are uh, actually really good. They are almost 100% uh, compatible with the old PLA chips. So this one then goes into the dead parts bin. <laughs> no, just because this machine powers on doesn't mean that everything else is working. So I'm gonna check all the... Uh, the porch and everything on this uh, machine with the diagnostics cartridge and the diagnostics uh, uh, harness that's used for um, testing the different I.O. porch, user port, uh, joystick porch, cassette, serial, everything. And here's the diagnostics cartridge, it's an original one. <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right, something happened. <laughs> Just hang. Let's uh, start it again. So now it runs or not. <laughs> so it actually just seems to lock up after, uh, yeah, checking some uh, RAM. Screen RAM uh, locks up. Maybe we have uh, RAM issues on this machine as well. So I'm now back in the dead test and uh, yeah, it seems to be uh, <laughs> doing its thing. Uh, so that's a little bit strange that the dead test can do the RAM test okay, but uh, the diagnostics cartridge uh, does not. Maybe it's just a diagnostic cartridge. It can be dirty contacts or anything like that. Just gonna clean everything and see if it uh, helps. All right, so I took out um, the GAL PLA and I replaced it with another PLA replacement. This is the Plankton PLA chip. And uh, no, the diagnostics uh, test runs just fine. So maybe it's uh, incompatibility between uh, the GAL PLA and um, the diagnostics cartridge, I really don't know. Let's see now with the testing harness uh, in. PLA test, okay. Color RAM. Everything okay, okay, okay. And then the sound and the interrupt test, which is the SID chip. So I would say that this machine is uh, now working 100% and uh, the different uh, CIA chips timers also uh, looks to be uh, okay. But obviously the GAL PLA chip uh, I have here is uh, either not working correctly or it's not compatible with the diagnostics test. However, I have a couple of more so long. let me test the uh, Another one, see if we get the same thing. And the third one. Yeah, it just uh, hangs. So uh, my conclusion is that uh, the GAL PLA is not 100% uh, compatible with um, 
the diagnostics cartridge at least, but I'm still gonna use it because uh, it's probably good enough for most purposes like uh, games and uh, everything else. Okay, that's it. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, cleaning and uh, make this uh, motherboard and uh, the machine shine again. And I'm also gonna do recapping of this uh, board. I'm gonna replace all the electrolyte capacitors with uh, new ones. I start by cleaning the motherboard, even though I blew away uh, most of the dust, there is still a lot uh, of dirt left on this board, so I just want to make it uh, shine and look as new. Just use some ordinary um, isopropyl alcohol, IPA as they call it, and then rub all the visible parts of this board. <laughs> So as you can see, there is uh, already a little bit of dirt building up on my uh, cotton swab here. I see that some of uh, my fellow retro YouTubers um, use a dishwasher to clean a <laughs> board like this. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, you save a lot of time, but um, I'm pretty sure if you use a dishwasher or you soak the whole board in water, it will damage it. Maybe not right away, but uh, you know water can hide inside uh, small cavities for a long time. And uh, well, at least you need to make sure that you dry it properly because I'm pretty sure if you get you can even get the moisture into the <laughs> chips themselves. I'm not really sure if they are 100% watertight between the, the pins of the chip and the, the actual leads that go into the dye inside the chip. So I think I will never use uh, that method. Besides, uh, <laughs> the dishwasher takes perhaps one hour to complete. <laughs> Cleaning the whole board with the IPA and the cotton swab takes me maybe 15 minutes. It looks like brand new actually. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna uh, clean all the contacts with the contact cleaner and uh, the back side of the board is uh, yeah, just perfect. Yeah, actually there's something there. There's a chip that has been replaced. It looks like um, 4066 U28. Time to clean every contact. Clean the edge contacts. And I actually like to use a fiberglass pen on uh, these edge contacts. It makes them really clean and shiny. Look at those contacts, shiny and clean. All right, this machine needs to be cleaned from uh, top to toe, as we say here. And uh, I'm gonna try and remove this uh, ugly sticker. It seems like it is uh, coming off quite easily. Yeah. And here we can see some of the color difference, but uh, it's not much actually. Hopefully the color difference is uh, just that uh, this area is clean and this is uh, dirty. So uh, this machine is gonna get a good cleaning now. I'm gonna take off the keyboard and uh, remove all the keys and give them a good bath. This is kind of strange. It's uh, one of these uh, rubber feet that are supposed to be under the machine. I don't know why it's uh, there. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> that's a lot of dirt and dust. Yuck. Some of the keys are uh, harder to get out than others. Uh, in case uh, they're really hard to get out, I can use uh, this tool here. It's uh, <laughs> Keycap puller. Well, 
<laughs> look at that. This must be one of the dirtiest keyboards I have ever <laughs> had in my hands. Ooh. Luckily none of the springs were rusted. Uh, I can see any corrosion, so uh, that's uh, good. Mm, yeah, well, maybe a little rust on some of them, but uh, I'm gonna soak them in some vinegar uh, then to uh, neutralize uh, the corrosion. It's time for a little cleaning session. For the springs uh, of the keyboard, I'm using this uh, vinegar, it's uh, 35% and it's made for cleaning and not uh, <laughs> cooking. And it's also a lot cheaper than <laughs> the regular white vinegar that you use in your kitchen. Alright, everything is now clean as a baby's ass and I'm gonna just uh, start to assemble the keyboard and everything. Just wiping over this with some uh, alcohol, kill those germs, <laughs> German germs perhaps, I don't know. This machine was uh, produced in uh, the former uh, Western Germany. Okay, so here's something I noticed uh, just now, and uh, no wonder two of the screws were missing. <laughs> the screw fastenings are broken off, and uh, yeah, even this in the middle seems to be uh, have been broken and then glued back on again. So I need to find a solution for that. So this machine must have uh, been taken some beating. <laughs> So this is how uh, these are supposed to be, so uh, I might have to try and rebuild these uh, posts here, I don't know, maybe I can print something and uh, glue on. So I searched uh, Thingiverse, I couldn't find uh, this screw hole, I found other screw hole replacements for uh, the machine, but uh, not these, so I have to design something myself. And the whole and the height of the thing has to be uh, <laughs> flexible because uh, I don't really know the exact height. Uh, now these needs to be filed down before I uh, glue them on. So yeah, but first I'm gonna design this one as a 3D model and then print it on my 3D printer. Here I am in the Open SCAD software that is a free 3D designer software where you program your model and it's basically just three cylinders that makes up the inner and uh, the outer part of uh, this 3D model. So I got the SCL file here and I just drag it into the Prusa slicer software that I'm gonna use to generate the, the 3D model for my printer. And since this part is uh, hollow now, I have to turn it around because I need to print uh, it the other way around. Otherwise it will be difficult for the printer to print <laughs> onto air. So uh, now that's it. And uh, then I want to print the tree instead of printing 
the same part three times. So I just uh, copy and paste and then just print three at one go. All right, so then it's just a matter of slicing it. And uh, yeah, it says here that it's gonna use 14 minutes and um, 0 0.66 meters of uh, filament. <laughs> Then I just export the, the G code and uh, copy that file over to the 3D printer. So now it just uh, prints a sample to replace the old black plastic that's in the extruded from before and uh, to replace that with a new one. Then it's just a matter of uh, selecting uh, the file from the SD card, the file that I exported, print from SD. I haven't connected the printer to any computer actually, it's just uh, printing from SD card. And then it's just a matter of waiting. <laughs> Estimated uh, print time is uh, 15 minutes, so uh, yeah, we'll see about that. I think this came out rather uh, nicely. They have the exact same size almost. So uh, now I just need to cut down a little bit onto this uh, broken off uh, plastics here and uh, try to make uh, these new screw holes the same height as uh, this one. So I think I need to cut a couple of millimeters uh, down here. And I'm gonna use uh, the Dremel for this. Let's see now. I cut a little bit into the side, but uh, hopefully it didn't go out. Nope. Didn't. Okay, I think that's a good fit. Now to the other side. So I think they will fit uh, just fine. Now it's time to mix up some uh, epoxy glue here and uh, see if we can. Uh, yeah, make them stick. I just apply a little bit of um, glue first to place uh, the part and then I will add some additional uh, epoxy around the sides of the screw hole. Okay, so now let's see, placing this right on top now this is just gonna dry for a couple of hours and then I might apply another uh, layer of epoxy onto this just to make it uh, stronger to fix uh, the broken off uh, keyboard lock here uh, these are the ones that uh, grip into the groove on the bottom part of um, the case. I just uh, did a clean cut on this one with the Dremel and I'm gonna glue on uh, this one. It doesn't fit right now so I need to cut off uh, the top of uh, this which I have already previously printed on my 3D printer. So I'm gonna use uh, super glue on uh, that. Let's see if I can place this on top of the, here without it uh, falling down. Oh, my fingers got stuck. <laughs> I think I better have some glue onto this. Something like that. <laughs> Not really sure how sturdy this is. I think I will have some. Um, epoxy glue onto this after the super glue has dried 
Anyway, that's not a big issue uh, because when uh, I get the screws into the case, it will uh, hold together pretty well. And we need some new uh, rubber feet for uh, this case, even if this is not the original uh, ones. They are a little bit smaller and black. I guess the original, if there were any, they were white, but I'm going to use these uh, black ones. I think they will look good. The epoxy glue on these uh, screw holes are no dry and really hard, so hopefully this is a sturdy fix. We'll see, I'm not gonna <laughs> tighten the screws too hard uh, on this one anyway. Okay, so I think that uh, repair went uh, pretty smooth. So it remains to be seen how uh, <laughs> sturdy this is in the long run, but uh, hopefully this machine won't be opened and closed a lot after this. This machine starts to become uh, complete, the uh, Commodore 64G, and uh, just a couple of more things to do here. And uh, yeah, one of those is to replace the electrolyte capacitors. There's uh, not that many, there's these three big ones here. 100 uh, microfarad there and all the rest uh, are actually 10 microfarads so I have uh, the list here if you're interested in the details let's see now and I also usually make a drawing uh, about uh, where all the caps are and their values and the polarity uh, that way I can uh, desolder all the caps at once and uh, yeah, refer to this drawing just to double check uh, the caps. There are, they are marked with uh, plus and minus on the silk screen, but uh, it's good to have that reference. I turned on uh, the desoldering station and the soldering station and I got all uh, the caps that I need here. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, get right to it then. If you don't have a desoldering station, you have to use, uh, for example, a pump like this. So I'm going to show you how to, to use that. And these pumps are very cheap and you just use your regular soldering iron. I think I paid like 50 kroner for this, 5 euros. So let's see now if I want to take out this one. I just uh, place the tip of the pump there and uh, heat up the solder for a few seconds and then press the pump. So that removed uh, most of the solder and uh, I empty the pump by charging it again. And let's take uh, the second one. like that. Using a pump like this can actually be faster if you just have a couple of uh, components that you want to remove. So uh, this came almost loose so I now just uh, use my finger on the back side and heat up uh, the pins. Okay so now they're loose. All right, that was all uh, the caps uh, taken out and uh, now in with the new ones. But uh, before that, I usually clean up all the solder pads on both sides just to make sure that the new solder is uh, sticking. And if there is a lot of uh, old solder left on the pads, then I usually use um, a solder wick to remove uh, that as well. But uh, I don't think that's the case right now, but there is some dirt as you can see. Then it's in with the new caps. Just make sure to get the polarity correct on uh, everyone because all these are uh, polarized. Then I add a little bit of uh, flux. 
strictly not necessary if uh, the solder tin you have is uh, good, which the one I have here is. It is uh, stanol leaded. <laughs> then it's time to solder. Alrighty, that was all the soldering and uh, now I'm just gonna double check everything that all the caps are in the right uh, polarity and also I'm gonna clean off uh, any remaining uh, flux on the back side. Now everything is uh, finished I think so I'm just gonna place the board into the case and start assembling the machine but I'm briefly just gonna test it first to see if it still works after recapping. Let's see now. Yep, that works. Nice. <laughs> One final thing before I wrap up this machine. I'm gonna add some heat sinks uh, to some of the chips. At least uh, the SID chip get one. And the CPU. I think they are the two main workhorses in this machine uh, and of course the big two but uh, it already has uh, this shield as a heatsink. So it's time to test if uh, the case repair I did uh, is working. Yeah that seems to fit I think. It's still holding so <laughs> and the screw holes I need the new screws for this machine I think I found the right ones here and uh, let me screw them in no didn't seem to fit quite seems to be off by a little millimeter the hole so actually the holes uh, were a little bit off position so I have uh, glued them on a little bit too far back so I only need to to drill uh, a little hole just on the side so to widen the actual hole that the screws are gonna run through it's like being a dentist I guess <laughs> Drilling holes. So there you can see how I drilled, just to widen the hole a little bit. So let's see now, does the screw fit now? Yeah, I think so. Yes, nice fit there. Yeah, and that one too. I don't want to tighten them too much. <laughs> I don't want to risk to break <laughs> my fix. All right, take a look at this beauty. Yeah, I'm really pleased how this turned out. It looks just amazing, the white uh, C64G. So let me turn it on now and uh, yeah look at all the keys have been clean and everything is uh, just nice and clean and white. Actually one thing I didn't test is if the keyboard is working uh, good or not so I didn't actually take off the PCB of the keyboard but uh, yeah seems like these are working just fine. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning of uh, the cassette drive and I have already opened it and as you can see it's uh, pretty dirty here so I'm just gonna take this out and uh, use some compressed air to clean away all the dust and, uh, and I'm just gonna clean the case in uh, some hot water and uh, 
Then I'm cleaning uh, the rear and right heads with uh, some alcohol and it seems like this uh, drive rubber wheel here <laughs> needs a bit of cleaning. It's quite brown. The belt seems to be okay. Now that's much better. Now I'm gonna spray everything with a lot of alcohol and then do the regular cleaning. <laughs> There's a few rust stains uh, <laughs> as well. I'm gonna treat them with some uh, WD-40 after I have cleaned everything. The cassette deck came out really nice. I cleaned it and uh, lubricated some of the moving parts and now I'm gonna test it with some uh, random cassette that came with this machine. All right, so it found something, found the GRL Turbo. <laughs> I don't know what that is. And that came out with a load error, so uh, that's probably due to a bad tape. I'm gonna test another one found a root okay so it has loaded the fast loader and started to load uh, the actual game and uh, yeah, it seems to be working so uh, this uh, cassette deck is uh, okay <laughs> and that's actually outrun <laughs> look at that that actually loaded completely All right, the machine is finished. I'm really pleased on how it came out. A great machine, the C64G, and I'm very happy to have one in my collection now. So even though it was an easy fix, just uh, swapping the PLA, you saw that there was uh, several other things that can be done to improve a machine like this. Anyway, thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe or the like button if you want to see more videos. And a special thanks to my patrons. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.